Um, so my name is Anastasia Ferraro. I am currently the chief at Purchase College Emergency Medical Services. I've been at PCMS for two and a half years at the moment. I've been working as an EMT for about three. When I first started, I was taking a lot of shifts. Um, and it would just sort of be in the space between when I had class and when I didn't. So like if the shift was nine to two and I had class from 10 to 12, I'd work from nine to 10 and then 12 to two, um, just so I could try and get in as many call hours as I could. Um, and in those off times, because at the time our call volume was so low, I was really able to balance it fine because it just meant I had to be in the office. And it just sort of gave me a guaranteed quiet space to do work until a call came in. Um, the only time where it really became a bit of an issue was when um, in the spring especially we have a lot of events that PCMS is on standby for and that would mean sacrificing my weekends which I would otherwise spend you know studying for an exam on Monday or studying for something on Tuesday and instead I had to sit and you know do rounds and patrol around the apartments so it was definitely difficult um, at that time and then as I got more involved um, I started teaching in the agency. I started holding the trainings and that was done between the hours of 12 and 2 on a Wednesday, which is typically the common hour, which is when I would otherwise be doing work and catching up on my work for the week. So it definitely um, took a toll on my free time and I really had to learn how to balance like what I loved, which was teaching EMS and working as an EMT and being a part of this agency with the necessity to like study and really put you know my nose to the book. All right, so we have our first standby event coming up this weekend on Saturday, um, October 26th, and it is Studoween. It's a student event, and basically what happens, I talked about this before, what happens with standby events, we are essentially on call in case something bad happens. Um, UPD is gonna be everywhere, so we're not gonna have a problem um, with them showing up late to calls. So there's basically going to be three postings, um, and you can sign up for them on this Excel spreadsheet that I sent out to you guys. So there's going to be the tent crew, and we're going to set that up outside of the studio at 1 p.m. Um, people on the tent crew are probably, once the event starts, the event starts at 8, um, we're probably going to go into the studio to help stabilize the barricades because people get kind of crazy. So we're going to be working with UPD and security there, um, holding up the barricades. So if you're interested in something like that, um, you can do that. Last year at Culture Shock. Culture Shock. So Culture Shock is this weekend. Uh, essentially going to be three sort of sections of people and where they're going to be working. So there's going to be tent workers at the side of the studio, field workers, side of the stage, patrol. We also had um, a bunch of calls right at the stage. Um, there were people, a uh, very intoxicated patient that became combative, and UPD had to come and deal with that. There was someone who had a bottle broken over their head oh in the, the pit in front of the stage. He's in, he's in custody. I think one of our patients just hit one of our guys. He was being wrangled by security at the barricade because he was drunk. Hot as shit. I saw his people's no reaction. Um, when did this happen? Five minutes ago? Um, really combative. Eric and uh, Mark were trying to you know, get him to calm down. Smacked Eric right in the face. He's in custody. Um, second posting is in the office. This one is really for just kind of decompressing, hanging out, sitting on the couches, eating food, or going to sleep if you're working the overnight um, and you commute. We have two couches, two air mattresses. Um, the office is also pretty centrally located with the campus, so once the parties start later at night, it's best to, it's a good option to be in the office because that's pretty close to the fort and to alumni and to the old and to the new. It's like equidistant to all the residential areas where most of the calls are probably going to go down. Um, and finally, this is more for the 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. This is ex pretty much exclusively for the 9 to 2 shift. We're going to have patrol which is where we're walking around all of the residential areas. Um, and you would just consistently do a loop for a couple hours. And again, as always, if someone flags you down, you have to call UPD through the radio. Honestly, what is the room number of the call? What is the room number? What channel do we use to contact UPD? Channel two. So never touch this unless you're gonna take off the tank. And again, lefty loosey, Friday tidy. Take it off, comes right off. And remember, I will throw something at you if you pick this up and let go. Because this, if this thing falls, hits the floor, and this thing pops off, you got a rocket. You don't want that. In the next 
four years. We have, so currently our first lieutenant, Jake Levinsky, um, is absolutely fantastic. Eight, 12? 12, 8, 14, 18, 14, 18 15 to 20. 15 to 20? Okay, now I'm getting a range. Okay, 15 to 20. 15 to 20. Yeah, that. That. <laughs> so, you got 15 correct. That's the max. The range for the non breathers are from 12 to 15 liters per minute. The only time you would go anything like above that is if you're hooking them up to this. He's been working with a member of the PSGA, Chris Klein, to um, communicate with New York State Commissioners and the Department of Health to work towards getting grants for a transport um, vehicle called a Gator, which is basically like a short distance. It's like a golf cart with a um, stretcher on the back that we can use for within campus, because currently we're BLS, we don't have an ambulance, we don't have any transport vehicles. Um, so they are currently working on getting that. And if we do, that would really push you know, the scope of where PCMS can respond. So we can now respond to calls on the loop because you have a vehicle. We weren't previously able to do that because everything is on foot. And other than that, I'm just hoping that, you know, we continuously get more members coming through and more people interested in continuing the teaching and continuing really being a part of like the executive board and having a deeper role in the agency. That's really what I'm hoping for. So like new people coming in, becoming interested, forming, you know, really good friendships that stick with it as I have, as I'm sure, you know, everyone in the agency can attest to that. Um, yeah, and just staying strong and not fizzling out and dying and becoming a no longer agency. That's kind of like my greatest fear and would be really sad if that happened. So. I'd heard about the agency on campus just through like mutual friends being in the agency and seeing people in uniform and I think like somewhere around my sophomore year, I saw people actually going to a call in full uniform with the bags and everything. I was really interested in what was going on. Um, I'm a pre-medical student. I'm interested in going to medical school. And I found that I was interested in the science side of it. So I wanted to see if I was interested in the patient care aspect of medicine and figure out if helping people was really what was motivating me to go into medicine versus the need, the, the drive of gaining the knowledge of the science of it. It was a balance that I'm happy I learned. Like I can have more in my college life than just school and like using my free time only for friends. Like I can have multiple things in my free time um, and still be successful, you know, academically, socially, all that good stuff. I am the first lieutenant here at Purchase College GMS. I've been involved in the medical field for about five years now. I make the schedules, the training schedules. I help out with the curriculum. I am the liaison with the PSGA. I am the volunteer committee supervisor. And anything that needs to be done, any documents that have to be made or updated, that is also my job. We work very hard on the job. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Litos. I am Chief Operating Officer at Purchase College EMS. I have quite a bit of experience, so I was able to kind of use that to pick this agency up and make it into something that we could be proud of and something that can service the campus. Our goals in PCMS, um, semester-wise, we would like to train up to 10 new first responders and have them out there by the end of the semester, or at least by Culture Shock, which is coming up in about a month, month and a half, um, and have them be ready, be out there, be in the field, interacting with patients. One of the more recent calls that I had on this campus was something that you don't really get prepared for how to deal with in EMT school, which is a non-emergency call. So something that really presents as a non-life-threatening issue. So in EMT school and through my work as a tech, 
pretty much everything that I have encountered through my volunteering has been this is an immediate life threat. We need to get this person to the hospital ASAP. Um, and I knew how to deal with that because that's very textbook. It's very, you follow the training that you received in school and what the paramedics and other ALS providers and your supervisors tell you to do. Um, one of my more recent calls here was actually something that was incredibly simple. And I sort of, you, you kind of blank on like what to do in that case where the person is alert, they're talking to you, the only issue is they fell down and they passed out, everything else, they're alert and oriented, there's nothing broken, there's nothing immediately wrong, so it was just kind of like, it was very different to what I was used to, which is very fast paced, very high intensity, and switched to more of like a communication with the patient, trying to calm them down, you know, let them know that like there's no immediate life threat to them, and that we just want to get them to the hospital just for like checking out and making sure that they're entirely okay. But it was definitely like a different muscle to flex, which is more on patient communication in a non-life-threatening situation. And I feel like that is really what PCMS kind of like has to offer as opposed to the other 911 um, agencies is that, you know, volunteering at a large volunteer organization um, like on Long Island, you're going to get a lot of 911s, a lot of very like cut and dry trauma cases, get them to the hospital, move on, go to the next patient, maybe a few transports. Um, but here it's very much like you're going to see a lot of different things and you're going to get to use a lot of skills that you didn't really think that you would have to use as an EMT. So. We were just told it wasn't crossroads. <laughs> we were in front of crossroads. Uh, Sorry, what Guys, and uh, for CMS arrived on scene. Uh, everything's like a here. Um, I mean, I was to with the Yeah, I'm here with the patient right now. The, the uh, PCMS just okay. showed up. Thank you. That's okay. Yeah. And like you said, it's just like. Yeah, I'm going to just. Oh, there's one. Oh, blue guy. 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 Oh, <laughs> um, Mr. Complete. Thank you. You're welcome. You can put Cheat Jordan J O G C. Okay. Is that a nice one? What happened with Harrison is they now bill for RNAs. Yes. So, which is a three hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. Even if they do not receive medical treatment, they show up. They charge. Receive arrival. Yeah. They they, sh they charge three hundred fifty dollars just to show up. Um, so they surrendered the RMA to us so that that young lady did not get billed. Yeah. I've been fortunate enough to not have to see anything entirely too traumatic that someone wanted me to quit. And I realized that, you know, I'm fortunate in that. I've kind of taken steps to do that on purpose. Um, I know a couple people who are currently working in the city at um, volunteering out of like Langone Medical Center or New York Prez and they tend to see a lot of really disturbing stuff like gunshot wounds or you know they they suck their patients um are so injured that they die in the ambulance and i've put myself in a situation where i don't need to face things like that because i don't want to i have a long track of medicine ahead of me and i don't want to get too burned out <laughs> just yet so i've really stuck to like textbook trauma get them in the ambulance get them to the hospital so i became an emt about three and a half years ago, and as soon as I did that, I immediately joined the agency and started working here. Uh, I made a lot of incredibly valuable friendships that I don't think I would have made outside of the agency, just because I tended to stay like kind of within my own major with people that I knew, and through PCMS I really was able to meet people in the VA, in political science majors, literature majors, kind of everyone, and really like diversify my friend group instead of kind of staying within, you know, biology and chemistry and all that stuff. <laughs>